So this is, um, we're sitting in the North Ballroom, which was originally a dining room um, space, and it was serviced by a, a main kitchen in the center part of the building. Um, there is a you know, balcony for uh, musicians, so there was live music being played above. Um, what we're actually standing on is actually a, 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 a clear span space where you have units above. So if you can imagine, um, you know, uh, 13 stories, or excuse me, 11 stories of building above this, and we actually have a very large open space underneath um, a columned uh, tower above. So there's actually a whole floor of steel structure on the third floor, which transfers the load all the way to the exterior of the space and creates this open span, uh, wonderful open span space. So you have large deep beams, which you're seeing here, but that actually goes up into the floor of the third floor to allow us to cantilever, or excuse me, to cantilever the loads to the edge of the building. So it was an engineering feat at the time. Yeah, it was, a, it was an extremely uh, uh, brash uh, engineering feat to kind of pull all this to the edge of the, to the, edge of the building and down, um, creating one wonderful space inside. Uh, the decorative, you know, plaster here is, is largely intact. We've cut out select areas where we've had to relocate plumbing um, because of uh, renovations above uh, and then bring those down. But the, the intent is to uh, establish a new restaurant here and the intent is also to try to reuse and restore a good amount of this uh, existing plaster work uh, because we think it's one of the most uh, important parts of the building. Is the uh skill set exist in Chicago to do this kind of restoration work or do you have to scour the country for it? We actually uh, did find a local uh, Chicago uh, plaster restoration company. Um, they've done some work already in the lobby and we can see some of their work there. Uh, we're using a, a, an outfit called Renaissance Restoration and they do great work and they've done um, work locally and then work I think in Missouri as well. And it's, and it's a little bit of, it's part archaeology and part um, architecture. What we're doing with most of these older buildings is, is correcting the wrongs of our predecessors. Uh, over, over the period of, you know, 100 years, these buildings have been added onto, have been edited by uh, other architects. And what we're hopefully doing here is, is bringing them back to their original glory by removing any sort of... Uh, inconsistent additions or renovations and then inserting uh, more modern and more uh, uh, convenient uh, finishes to the units and to the, the amenity spaces that will be open to our future residents. Some of the negative changes that were made in the past, was that a, a function of just the economy wouldn't support a full restoration? or? <coughs> Well, the, the challenge with these buildings is they were built under a totally different pretense. They were built as hotels. Uh, so we're standing in a room that's 3,000 square feet. Uh, and it's a double story volume, or you know, sort of double height space. Uh, so one can imagine that the, the types of folks that would want to come in here and you know, operate a restaurant are few and far between. Uh, and especially in a town like Chicago where you know, starting a restaurant is not exactly a, a, a foregone conclusion. Um, economically speaking, yes, I think there have been obstacles to uh, reutilizing old uh, hotels which have a tremendous amount of public space and a tremendous amount of uh, sort of large ancillary spaces like ballrooms, like dining rooms, like large seating areas. So the, the solutions have been to partition those spaces up into smaller areas which in the end takes away from the, the grandeur of the space. So what we're hoping to do is sort of remove all of those partitions, bring it back to its grandeur, and then find, uh, you know, in a savvy way, find new tenants to occupy those, those great old... So we're standing at the west entrance, um, and we're looking up towards the main lobby space, which is almost a full flight above us. Uh, what we have is a grand staircase with uh, lovely, uh, again, details that depict the harvest, depicts uh, those Native American motifs that were on the exterior of the building. Um, and then this feature serves as a kind of connective tissue between the entrance, grade, elevation, the lobby elevation, and then a 
second elevation, which was actually the, it is the Piano Nobile, which was really the promenade space. Um, and that was where all the sort of public seating areas were for the hotel. So um, this stair really does connect those spaces. But as we look up into the lobby, you also see this main central column, which has, you know, uh, four major beams coming into it at the juncture of those two of those beams and the column are the wonderful Native American uh, uh, busts with uh, bone plate uh, or bone breastplates and uh, decorative heads, headdresses, etc. Um, now, it, in the day, were uh, was this kind of plaster work and terracotta the kind of thing you could get from the catalog, or did it have to be commissioned uh, originally for this space? No, this was all commissioned work. Th th these are far more decorative than you would find out of the catalog and I think you know today we look at this and it's a bit of an anachronistic uh, depiction of, of uh, Native Americans uh, and it's you know something that we'll obviously address as we, as we start to use uh, paint in a different way so maybe use liquor we don't really call out certain, certain features of the Native Americans and, uh, and, and rather inappropriate honor the decorative quality of the plaster work, but to use paint in a way to play down uh, the, the depiction of the red-faced Indian, let's say. Well, uh, given your proximity to the uh, University of Chicago, I would guess that's a matter of some sensitivity. Yeah, well, they, they, I, think it's, I think there's sensitivity across the board. Um, one of the other things you'll see here is the, the Carrera marble that is uh, forming a very high also starts to become the, the, the handrail for the promenade or the piano nobile space. You've seen a number of, uh, of these buildings. Uh, in your mind, what's, what are the most distinctive features here? Oh, in terms of distinctive features, um, I think that you know, definitely the Native American detailing is, is, is by far and away a very unique feature. Uh, I think the center column um, as a supporting column is very, very uh, uh, unique uh, and in some way very, very powerful. I've always thought that this building is a very brash and a very American kind of uh, building, the way it sits against the park, the way that the, the structure within the, the two ballroom spaces uh, spans to create a very large span uh, space, uh, columnless space, if you will. And then this center column, I think, is sort of reinforces that idea of a very uh, strong and very, uh, let's say, masculine um, space. Is that a structural column or a decorative column? Oh, that's certainly structural. All of these columns here are, that you see are structural. And one of the other things that we haven't touched on is the, the skylights, which you'll see there we've exposed the original skylights. So when we got into this space, one of the original thing, one of the things that we came across was there were actually freestanding structures that were built out within this space. So there were freestanding partitions and then small shops that were within this larger space. They were selling newspapers and sort of bodega, etc. We took all that out and then also uncovered, uh, and in doing so, we've uncovered a series of things. You know, one were the skylights, which we are going to reinstate to bring light back into the space. Then we got rid of all of the partitions in here to really expand the space back to its, uh, back to its original grandeur in terms of scale and size and height. Will, will this space have any function beyond the grand lobby, or? The Grand Lobby will be, yeah, th that's the prime function. It will have a, a front desk that sits over there. It will have a small seating area here. And then as we, if we can scroll around, uh, there will actually be a new uh, elevator access, which will get you from the, the ground floor up to the lobby and then all the way up to the second floor. And then back out here, we've opened up this space back to the facade to really bring in more light, similar to the way that we're bringing the skylights back in and we've, we've come up with an idea for a kind of Wi-Fi lounge slash library area here for people to, to bring out their laptops, grab a cup of coffee, and, and do work in public. 
Um, we think that'll be a really nice feature for residents and for visitors of the building. We are standing in the south ballroom space. Uh, the north ballroom was the formal dining area overlooking the park. This was a, an area that would be used primarily for dances and, you know, um, other ballroom activities, large uh, receptions, etc. Um, and between the two spaces was a, a kitchen that serviced both, both uh, spaces. So, again, this space has a little less detail within the, the arched, uh, uh, the barrel arches that we're seeing above. Uh, most of the detail really at the, at the perimeter along the walls. Um, again, much more uh, ornate than uh, the rest of the building. And that was, you know, in keeping with what traditionally was done in ballrooms. Very, very ornate, very uh, uh, sort of uh, uh, festival of, of all things rich and, and plentiful. So that was, that's what you'll commonly see in these, in these ballroom spaces. We were just talking a little bit about the archaeology of, of restoring these old buildings. One of the, the finds that we have here is this whole space, uh, or, or tall ceiling height, was actually boxed out with a, a drop ceiling and a, and a wall, softened down to uh, probably about eight feet. And as you can see, the, the, the clear span of the space is, is far more uh, gracious. And what we also discovered was a, a formal entranceway uh, with a window that has been bricked in over the over the period oh, of wow. uh, life. So we're going to plan on so reinstating a window, and then we've already you can see some of the plaster restoration work uh, where the pink is. Uh, that's all been prepped for uh, you know the plaster restoration. Basically, the, the plaster took a mold from one side, recast new plaster, and then attached it to. Uh, the other side of the of the panel there to give that detail back to what it's what it originally was. So it's quite an art. Um, these these re these restoration plaster guys, uh, restor Renaissance restoration is the, the folks that are doing this work. They've done a great job thus far.